Hi, this is David Rehagen with ThinkGeo, and we're going to go over a new utility that we've created called the Cache Generator. What the Cache Generator allows you to do is it allows you to take the layers that you've created and pre-cache them. So you can either distribute the cache, put the cache on a web server, and basically increase the speed by rendering the uh, rendering the maps from tiles in a cache instead of having to draw them in real time. This project has been uh, developed based on just popular demand where people you know, had been building tools like this and what we wanted to try to do was to consolidate you know, all of our lessons learned and also uh, encapsulate the best practices and uh, add threading and a whole bunch of features to it and show you what's all possible. So let's start by running the application. And I'm going to go over these parameters here in just a second. Actually, let me, let me just close this so it's not so confusing. I don't see two of those on the screen. So the first set of parameters are going to be the upper left and the lower right point. That's going to define the bounding box of the area that you want to render. Here we're also going to be able to select the from and the two zoom levels. So you can say that, well, I just want to generate zoom level 5, for example, and you could do that. And you'll see what kind of consequences this has, uh, you know, as far as the number of tiles. We can also optionally embed a watermark. So here, if you wanted to put a watermark um, to be added to each tile, you could do that here. We also have a restrict to layer option. And what this does is it allows you to provide a shape file that is going to tell the cache generator to only generate tiles inside of the polygons inside of that uh, shape file. So like I was saying, it, it is polygons that, that you need to provide in this file. And why this is useful is that many times when you're generating a cache, maybe zoom level 1 to zoom level 10 generates rather quickly because there's not that many tiles. But as you start going you know, into zoom levels 11 to 20, the tile count really increases. And one strategy that people can use is, let's say, for example, that you wanted to build a cache of, of Europe. What you might want to do is you might want to restrict those, the zoom levels 10 through 20, you might want to restrict those to polygons of the major cities so that you know, not maybe 99% of all your hits are going to be from people querying in major cities, and you can generate those uh, much farther down and then uh, generate the other ones dynamically on the fly. Now, another option that goes with this is gridding size. And zero, it says here, zero is for no gridding. And basically what this does is, many times since this, is, this can be a highly detailed polygon shape file, what we do is we grid the file. I'll give you kind of an example here. We grid the file so that um, instead, of, instead of querying, uh, let's say, for example, that you wanted to draw you know, a little tile in here. Or like, actually, let's go to Europe. So you want to draw a little tile in here. Instead of having to query the very complex shape of this country, it, it actually divides the map into a whole bunch of grid cells, and it makes the querying easy, uh, much faster. Uh, and so you can play around with that number, and basically uh, the higher number you include here, the, uh, the faster it's going to be as, as far as being able to query um, to see if a tile is within that restriction layer. You set a cache output folder, so this is where all the tiles are going to be created. And they're going to be created in the same folder structure that you would find um, if you were to have the file bitmap tile cache uh, enabled on your overlays. You can also pick an image format. We defaulted to, to PNG, but you can select JPEG and you can select an image quality. We've added multi-threading to the application to try to take advantage of as many cores as possible. And this allows you to set a thread count. So you can say how many threads you want um, spun up for this process. We also have some, some status indicators down here. We'll go into that as soon as we go ahead and generate it. Um, generating is going to start the generation process. Quit's going to stop it and uh, close the form. But an interesting one is preview. 
And what Preview is going to do is it's going to tell you how many tiles we're anticipating on generating. So here we're generating zoom levels 1 through 10. Uh, based on this extent, if we previewed this, looks like the we would generate 174,000 tiles. And here it gives you the breakdown by zoom level, how many tiles are going to get generated. So you can start to see um, what the overhead is going to be to generate these. And once we start to generate them, we're going to, we're going to start to discover what the total time cost per tile is, and then you can make some back of the napkin calculations based on the number of tiles. So actually, let's, let's do this. Let's say that we're going to generate from 1 to 20, um, and let's go ahead and preview that. And you can see that's going to be a lot of tiles, and you can see how quickly that increases as we, as we uh, keep going closer and closer to the ground. But let's go ahead and try to generate that. We'll set four threads and click Generate. And we're going to give us some statistics here. So we've been running for about seven seconds now. It looks like we have, I don't know, 14,000 days left, 18 hours. It's taking us about six, five, six milliseconds a tile. Of course, the rendering that we chose for default is very simple. So as you add more data layers, I mean, I think in this one there's only one layer. As you add more layers and more complicated styles and higher density of things, of course, this average time uh, per tile is going to go up. Uh, we also let you know how many tiles we've generated and the current progress. Now, if we were to quit and stop generating tiles, come back in and regenerate it, if it sees that the tile already exists, it's not going to go through the generation process of regenerating it. So you can pick up where you left off. Another great thing about the utility is that you can run this utility on multiple computers and have different sets of zoom levels selected. So it allows you to distribute uh, the load a, a little bit. And the other thing you could do is you could um, also, if you wanted to generate for lower, uh, these like zoom level 20, for example, you could, you could cut up the bounding boxes as well. So let's go ahead and quit. All right, we can see and in our cache folder here, it's created a bunch of zoom levels already. That one only has one file, this one. So here it's generated a lot of empty space where we didn't have anything, but it generates them all in there if we go ahead and delete that. You've already generated 15,000 tiles just in that uh, just in that little bit of time. Of course, the tiles, you know, were very simple. Like I said, one other thing that's interesting is that if we were to put a restriction layer, and in this case, our restriction layer is just the boundary. Uh, I mean, the the country O2 shape file. So it's the boundary of of all of the countries. And let's actually say we were to do this. We were to go to, let's say, 1 to 10. And we don't include the restriction layer and we preview it. Looks like we're generating 174,000 tiles. And if we put the restriction layer on, looks like we're going to cut down by about 30,000 tiles based on the restriction layer. Now, the actual numbers here, when you turn the restriction layer on, are really a back of the napkin calculation. Because what we do is we take the entire area of this bounding box, and we figure how many tiles without the restriction area. And then we take the total area of your restriction layer, and we basically average that out based on the difference in, in the area. Uh, but it gives you an idea of how it would really cut down and if we went to something like zoom level 20, you, know, you can see here, so 33 billion. And if we turn the restriction layer off, it looks like 137 billion. So it gives you a, a good idea. We've also included all the source to this. So you can go through here and, and tweak it or learn from it. And uh, I just want to kind of briefly go over some of the highlights. Um, the main form really just kind of sets the stage. So this is really just responsible for getting the parameters uh, from the text boxes and things like that, doing some simple enforcement 
of it, and also displaying the uh, displaying the status results. So there's really not much in here that's uh, of much note. The layer provider is is probably the most important place as far as what you're going to be dealing with because in here we have two static methods and the first static method is get layers to cache and what you're going to do here is you're going to this is where you're going to put in all your code to set up your layers just like you would draw them in the desktop or the web or, or whatever other uh, map suite product you have here's where you would set up all your layers and add it to this layer collection and then the, the tile generator or the cache generator is going to use this as its basis to generate the tiles and then it has another method to get the scales. And here you're going to set up the scales that you use. Now, if you use just our default zoom level set, which probably most of you use unless you're dealing with you know, data in Spherical Mercator, um, then basically you just create this. You um, add all the different scales to this scales collection here. Now, if you were to be, if you were using uh, Spherical Mercator, you would just change this to say like, Google Zoom Level Set or Bing Zoom Level Set, or I think there's a Spherical Mercator Zoom Level Set. You don't have to change any of the rest of this code. The other part that actually contains the bulk of the code is the Tile Cache Generator class itself. And uh, I won't get into exactly how all this works. You can look through the code. Um, but suffice to say, it uh, you know fetches a bunch of tiles that it needs to, to get drawn. It creates a number of worker threads, and uh, and it draws those tiles and, and creates the cache, applies the watermark, etc. So we're going to go ahead and release this. And uh, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to to ask on the forums. Uh, and of course, we always uh, like to hear feedback. And if you've enhanced the the generator that you think is is positive that you want to share back to the community, let us know. We'll update it and we'll post the code uh, back out to you, the users. So thanks a lot. I appreciate your attention. Bye-bye.